And we're back. You are listening to the Talking Boxing with Billy C. Show. You're watching us on the Fight Now television channel. And if you don't have Fight Now on your sports channel lineup, you need to call your local television provider and tell them that you want Fight Now right now. It's that simple. Pick up the phone and call. All the information about the channel, you can find it on their website, www.fightnow.com. And speaking of now, join us is uh, an undefeated welterweight contender. You know who he is, Phil LaGreco. Good morning, Phil. Good morning, man. Thanks for having me. Hey, man. You? L- l- loved you. Uh, love having you on uh, this early in the morning. I know. Uh, I know you like to be in your feety pajamas, sleeping and stuff. But uh, glad you could join us this morning. What's scheduled for you next, bro? What, what do you got coming up? I know you had some stuff uh, in the works, and uh, I-, I know you're ready to to make a move on uh, uh, getting in position for a world title shot. What, what do you got? In the, what do you got cooking? I'm just waiting upon my uh, managers uh, to give me a call and let me know. I know they're working on some things. Uh, you know, uh, well, so far, this year's been a good year. The stepping stone, um, getting back in the mix. Definitely, this was my most active year in the last four years, uh, making up for a lot of last time. Um, so, you know, we're doing the right steps leading towards uh, that path. Well, your last two fights, uh, I know specifically, uh, were against uh, uh, some pretty uh, decent opposition. As a matter of fact, I, w- when I was reviewing your stuff, I said, wow, you know, you really stepped it up uh, with uh, with the last two fights, especially uh, with Daniel Sostry in, in your last fight. You know, people look at uh, his record and they see he's got seven losses, but that that was a tough fight. You know, I mean, obviously, uh, it only, he only lasted seven rounds with you, but, but tell us about that one. Yeah, you know, um, I was supposed to fight somebody else. Uh, I think it was, I can't remember his name. His, his record was like 41-7. and seven. He was an aggressor, at which I was motivated. And then 10 days before the fight, he fills the medical exam. So, while well, Daniel Sasha was supposed to fight on that day, he was penciled then He was fighting on another card. And then we were able to, Golden Boy obviously was able to put him, pull him out of that card and get him to fight me. And, you know, he was a guy, that uh, slippery guy, uh, you know, wasn't easy to hit. Um, he's never been stopped before by the referee, so he's never been to kill. So at least, you know, out of the seven losses, I was able to do that. And, you know, he he, he even dropped me in the first round. He caught me, uh, caught me cold, clean. I got up, no problem. You know, anyone can get dropped in boxing. What happens next determine, determines what kind of fighter you are. Some fighters fail, some fighters, you know, proceed and do well. And from then on, just kept, uh, you know, doing uh, what I was supposed to do. And we got the job done, and now I'm worried about the next one. You know, let, let's talk about that. You know, you get dropped in the first round. You get back up. What does that do, like, for, for a guy like yourself? I, I know you can't speak for anyone else, but how do you handle that mentally? I mean, is that something like, uh, you know, you just, uh, you know, hey, he caught me, or, or, or uh, you know, you, you get mad, or, or you stay controlled? I mean, what goes through a fighter's mind, specifically yours, uh, when that happens, and and you gotta you gotta get back on track, man. You gotta get back to the game plan. I mean, wh- what do you do as a fighter? And oh, by the way, you're doing it right in the middle of a round. Uh, well, it can make you or break you. For me, it makes me. I mean, I'm I'm the type of fighter. Unfortunately, uh, in the, I get as I get started, I start slow and then I pick up the pace. I totally forgot about it. Some fighters they have a mental block. I want to get knocked down. They you know they'll they'll be scared. You no, know, they're like oh. Crap, I got knocked down, and it'll, it'll keep repeat, playing on their head. I totally forgot about it. So a fighter that gets knocked down or is in a bad situation has to forget about it and worry about what's going on now and forward. If you worry about what's going on now and backwards, you're going to be stuck and you're going to be stuck uh, in, in a tough fight. No, you're right, and and as that fight turned out, uh, you systematically broke him down and uh, ultimately uh, uh, stopped him in the seventh round. Um, now the welterweight division is uh, packed with some talent. I- is there anybody out there that you have your sights set on? I mean, not not that you're looking past your your possible next opponent or or you're trying to jump the gun or anything, but obviously you and your team have some kind of a plan that you're at least discussing. I- is there some kind of a sequence that that you're looking at uh, where you know your first goal is going to be a specific fighter? Do you do you have anyone in your sights? I know this next fight is going to be a big fight for me. It's not, you know, it's going to be something that, you know, it's going to be on TV. Um, so I know it's a big fight. 
It really doesn't matter. I'm ranked by three sanctioned bodies, WBC, WBA, WBO. So I definitely want to take one of those routes. Um, it doesn't matter. I mean, anybody really in the top ten, uh, I want to just give the fans what they want. It's 2013 is going to be about the fans, what they want and who they want. You know, in the welterweight division, there's a lot of guys that are that are what we call cutes. You know, cute cutie fighters in 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 the welterweight division. They they box a lot. They throw a lot of punches. They 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 don't like to stand and bang. Um, how are you going to approach those kinds of fighters when when you're you're kind of a a guy that likes to to go after his opponent? I mean, how do you break down a fighter that that you know is going to be on his bicycle? I wasn't a kind of Olympic boxing team. I have a strong amateur background, so. I could box my butt off. I just choose not to because I never had the chance to uh, show my, my skills. I guess I was, I was always able to try to run, you know, try to push the action, try to, I don't want to say bully my opponents, but just try to push the action and go down. But when it comes down to it, in the big stage, you're going to have to box, and I know I can box my butt off. I just haven't had the chance to show it, but, you know, if it comes down to it, you know, it's all about boxing skills. It's all about uh, setting a strategy that you know that works best for you, and it's going to work uh, against your opponent. You know, for all of our viewers and and listeners out there that have never seen Phil Greco fight, how would you describe your style to them? That, to get, you know, how would you describe yourself, you know, to them? Uh, I would like to say smart, uh, being smartly smart, aggressive. Um, you know, I don't like to take a shot just to get one. I like to push the action. I like to go toe to toe. But obviously, you know, I try to avoid getting hit um, as less as possible. I just like to fight, really. You know, uh, that's, you know, if I could fight in a phone booth all day, no problem. <laughs> yeah, that, and, and you know what? The funny thing is, we we get into this conversation a lot with with listeners and stuff. And and there's there's a, a group of uh, fans out there that that listen to the show that you know they're always talking sweet science and stuff. But man, the guys like you that that are willing to to stand in that phone booth, they're the ones that sell the tickets, man. That's who people want to go and see. And uh, uh, you know, a good collection of of both is is where it's at. You know, uh, you're Italian. I'm Italian. You're a Paisan. I, you know, one thing, the, the history of, of Italian fighters, you know, years ago there used to be a lot more uh, fighters uh, that, uh, you know, were Italian. Not so much today. Uh, are you trying to bring that back for us, man? We've we got we, we to get represented again. Well, you know, in Italy there is a lot of talent. They just stay amateur. If you look in the Olympic boxing uh, tournament in the Olympics, in the last two Olympics, Italy's about six medals. They stay amateur because they have a good program there, you know, pays well, and they don't want to take that step to turn pro. Uh, as far as Italian Americans, the Italian Canadians, yes, you are right. Um, I think, you know, they, the, our parents spoil, spoil their kids, man. I mean, they, mom, mom, mom and dad, you know, they, they're the ones that had a, had a hard life when they immigrated here, and, you know, they, pretty much the kids, become businessmen or try to do something else. I mean, right now, really, there's me and Paulie at the time, uh, fighters that are just, you know, fighting and, uh, you know, trying to make our... Obviously, Paulie's made a name for himself and he's doing very well. Um, but now, you know, it's just me, really. Um, I don't know any other Italian fighters, but who knows? Maybe, hopefully, you know, a lot of fighters get encouraged and uh, they, uh, they enjoy their gym. Well, you know, first of all, don't compare yourself with Paulie Malinaji. He he's not exactly an exciting fighter. You are, you know. So, uh, uh, you know, I, I think that in in the long run, yes, he's accomplished a lot. He's a he's a world champion right now and all of that. But you know, one of the things that he failed at in in a way was, you know, that excitement, that knockout, you know, and that's something that that you bring, and that's going to be a breath of, of fresh air. You know, you, it's interesting your opinion. Uh, uh, about uh, uh, Italians and, and, you know, for their kids and, and trying to make it better. And that's a great point. I, I never heard uh, uh, anyone as honest as that. And I, and I agree with you 100%. Uh, that's for sure. Um, in the, Again, in the welterweight division, it's a pretty tough division. Oh, one thing I wanted to say about uh, Italian, uh, pro boxing in Italy, there's like only one promoter, right? OP2000 or something. Isn't, isn't he the only guy that, uh, isn't that the only promotional Those company? Those are my managers. Oh, okay. Well, they're the only promoters I was out there. By, I was signed by them. No, they're they're 
there's about three, four promoters in Italy. They do small shows. Um, but OB2000, uh, Salvatore, and Christian Kerki, right. they're like, you know, the in Europe, they're like very powerful promoters, uh, more as managers. And, you know, I was signed by them. And then, I, you know, I, I told them, look, you know, I want to go to the States. I think that's where I'm going to make my mark. i got to be in a place where... Uh, you know, it's always been a dream of mine to fight in the U.S. and and please the American fight fans. That is so important for me because I always use let's use this comparison. You know, there's there's a lot of kids and a lot of people you know, that play soccer all over the world. And if you play soccer, you know you have to go play in Italy, in Spain, or in England. Okay, so if you're playing in Spain and you're a soccer player, let's say from Brazil. You have to please the Italian fans in soccer and in boxing, vice versa. For me, I have to please the American fans. It's all about them. It's all about, you know, most important is about them because they're the ones that are, are giving me the chance to put uh, definitely food in, food in, uh, on, on top of my table. Yeah, you know, it's funny, and it's true. I, I agree with you. But, you know, like we look at it, I do my show every day, and Europe is actually, in a sense, carrying boxing on, on their backs. You know, I mean, uh, uh, you know, all the fighters are, are, are fighting regularly over there, and, and the fans come out in, in, you know, bigger numbers at the live events. But yet the goal is similar to yours. Everybody wants to come uh, over to the U.S. to fight on the big cable networks and what have you. And uh, the fans are just starting to come back, and, and we're like in a resurgence. So you're, you're, in, a, you're in a really good spot. Uh, right now, Phil, do you know when your next fight is? I know you're waiting for something big. Do you have an idea when you're going to get back in the ring? March. We're looking at probably March. Um, we're looking at March, late February, March, I believe. You know, my coach book is Achilles, and yeah, you know, he wasn't even able to come to my fight in Atlantic City a week before he booked his, his Achilles, and uh, definitely took a toll out of my uh, out of my uh, regimen, out of you know. So we're looking at March. Well, listen, Phil, we wish you all the luck in the world. I, I want you, as soon as you get that uh, fight scheduled, get a hold of me. You have all my contact information. would love to have you come back on and uh, uh, chat about the fight and stuff. Um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on you. I have been watching you for a while. I know that you were going to fight for some uh, 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 regional title that fell through uh, – uh, not too long ago, a year or so ago. So uh, you've been paying your dues, and uh, you're going to get paid off soon, bro. Thanks. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, and uh, we shall do this again. Sounds good, my man. And listen, you have a good holiday. And uh, uh, So, hey, one thing. You know, at least you were in Atlantic City. Um, you know, the food in New I'm from New York. You know, the food in New York is pretty good. You know, uh, it's not going to compare to Italy, but it's not bad, right? You know what? It's funny you say that. There's a big, you know, I've been to restaurants all over the world, you know, had the luxury and the pleasure to eat all over. New York restaurants, the Italian restaurants, I don't know what it is. You know, maybe the Italian people lost their culture, but they never lost the food culture. It's so authentic, like very close to Italian food, like it, back home. I was very surprised. I go all the time to eat, uh, to eat out in New York and, you know, I got a friend of mine who takes him to all the best Italian restaurants, and they kept that, that recipe right to a tea. So that's some, something to be proud of. Yeah, well, uh, you know, it's funny because everywhere I travel, I'm always like, you know, uh, I tell you what, New York's got good food, man. And, and you're right. There's a lot of uh, good Italian restaurants uh, in, uh, in New York. I, I'm funny, you know, and you know how it is being Italian, you know, to find an Italian restaurant that can make a dish better than you can make it at home sometimes is hard, you know, but uh, there are definitely a few and, and they are uh, they are tops for sure. <laughs> No, that's for sure. I, you know, when I out at restaurants, I never order pasta. Oh, or no, no. No, you can't order pasta. People always do that. You know, I, I will tell you this, though, Phil. You know, one thing I do do, um, if I want to test a, a, a uh, an Italian restaurant, I, I'll, I'll order a, a lasagna just to test it because most Italian places don't make their own lasagna, and it's garbage, you know. But if you get a good one, that makes it themselves a good lasagna is uh, it's one of my favorites you know you know what every time i tell my mother uh, i said your home cooking is costing me um it's costing me stress on the scale 
<laughs> well, I'm sure she doesn't give up her meatball recipe, right? I mean, uh, you know how that is. You know, you, you, you yeah. know that goes that goes with them. You know, so uh, uh, that's great stuff, man. But you definitely got to get a hook. You definitely got to hook up with me when you uh, when you get this fight scheduled. And who knows, maybe we'll go have a, a bite to eat together. Are you from New York? Do you live in New York? Yeah, I live in New York. I, I, I'm in upstate New York. I, I, I'm out of the city now. I'm about three hours north, but uh, but I go down all the time. I, I, I'll tell you where to go. I'm actually closer to Montreal. I know you're. Uh, I know you're on the other side in in Canada, Ontario. But I'm uh, up a little north of uh, That's Albany. That's my training camp is in Montreal. Why don't you? Come, 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 uh, come, come see my training camp in Montreal. Oh, I would oh, love there, to. Man. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. At uh, Montreal, I can make it to Montreal. I'm by Lake George, Lake George, New York, which is uh, um, about three hours. I I'm about the same distance from Montreal as I am from Manhattan. Right on. Wow. And you know what? Montreal has some pretty... I, I found it at, uh, an Italian restaurant once in Montreal by accident. I don't know where it is. It was like I had to walk into almost like somebody's house, and it was fantastic. And uh, I was shocked. I didn't realize that, that Montreal had such good food. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Montreal's a great city. Um, you know, a lot of the Sicilians immigrated there uh, in Montreal. So when I was fighting there... You know, it was also, uh, I felt just like at home, close to home. A lot of Italian friends I got over there, you know. It's, it's, it's a great city. It's an interesting city. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. When you go into training camp, you get a hold of me. I'll come up there and I'll eat, but you can't because you'll be in training. So so man, I'll eat. I'll eat and I'll make fun. Battle. What's that? Making the weight. That's a battle. Always making the weight, man. <laughs> Especially for it Italians. I know, I know. Well, listen, brother, it was great chatting with you, and uh, have a great holiday to you and your family, and uh, make sure you get a hold of me as soon as you get that booked, okay? Likewise, brother. Take care, man. Thanks All right. for having me. All right, brother. Take care. That's the Italian sensation, my man Phil Logreco. Keep an eye on him, undefeated, 25-0 and 0 with 14 knockouts. And uh, he's looking to uh, make a splash in the welterweight division. So, hey, listen, I got to take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> 